I do want to talk about the future a little bit. So these midterms, Republicans really focused on key messaging about the economy, inflation, safety, things like that. But, you know, by and large, they didn't get that red wave that they thought was going to materialize. So do you think this message will shift within the next two years? So, so yes, it's supposed, it's expected to be a very contentious two years in Congress, um, with the House being controlled by Republicans, the Senate being controlled by Democrats. Not a lot of legislating is expected to get done to be done. Um, but House Dem House Republicans have already announced a number of investigations that they have planned into the Biden administration. Everything from Ukraine spending to COVID nineteen policies to probes of his son Hunter Biden. So that could really draw a lot of, you know, Republican support and attention um, and, and, yes, get the attention of voters. At the same time, you know, it could um, put a distaste in, in, in Democrats' mouths and they could, you know, uh, it could rile their base and they could come and out and, and vote in bigger numbers just as a rebuke on, on these issues um, and in hopes of, you know, getting real, making real progress rather than, um, you know, legislative investigations are often seen as is a waste of time. Like even the January 6th investigation, um, the polls will find that a lot of Americans are ready to be done with that and are, are a bit exhausted by it. Um, on the other hand, you know, it, it, we have two new leaders um, in the House, Hakeem Jeffries will be the minority leader, and Kevin McCarthy is expected to be the new House Speaker to replace Nancy Pelosi. They have historically not had a great relationship, so they will have to forge a new working relationship. But so far, the rhetoric from Republicans has been, you know, we're we're really going to come after Democrats and and take advantage of this. It's a slim majority, but take advantage of this majority in in the House to, um, you know, reverse or deliver a rebuke on Democratic policies that have been enacted over the past uh, two years. I do want to ask you about Kevin McCarthy. Does this latest GOP loss make his fight to become Speaker harder? Um. You know, it's it's in the Senate, so and and he is vying for House Speaker, so it's it's a different chamber. But yes, I mean, it certainly does not look good for Republicans. And um, you know, up until Election Day, he was really a, a shoe in to become the next Speaker. And the Republican losses um, it allowed the the House Freedom Cau Caucus, which is you know a coalition of right wing lawmakers, they saw this slim majority in the house as an opening for them um to to put up their own candidate which who just formally announced yesterday um and yes and and challenge mccarthy negotiate with him to have rules changes and all kinds of things that they you know want in exchange for the speaker votes so uh it it definitely doesn't look good for him and um I would say that, you know, from a legislating perspective, um, it hamstrings Republicans even more, even even in the House, uh, just because the Senate can, you know, uh, draw up support and for pieces of legislation, investigations, nominees, um, and then the House could be forced to take those on, which really just makes gives uh, Kevin McCarthy a lot more to do and makes his job a bit harder. And what happens if Kevin McCarthy doesn't get those 218 votes that he needs? Yes. Um, if one candidate, Andy Biggs, um, is the House Freedom Caucus, he's the former chair who is running against Kevin McCarthy, um, announced his candidacy yes yesterday, and he was nominated in um, November, uh, but he, he, he lost in the closed door vote, and McCarthy is the official nominee. So if one of them does not uh, receive 218 votes in the first round of voting, it will go to another round of voting until one candidate reaches the 218 vote threshold. It's very unlikely that Biggs achieves that, um, but this his multiple rounds of voting has not for a speaker has not happened in 100 years. So it could be very embarrassing for Kevin McCarthy, who has had speaker aspirations, um, you know, since for for years. Um, 
and it would just, you know, uh, hinder hinder his standing within the party before he even takes control. And as I mentioned, it's a, a very hard job wrangling this slim majority that he that he's faced with. So, I mean, the headlines have just been crazy, like Kevin Kevin McCarthy's hell um, it is one that comes to mind just in, in this contentious house um, and amid all of this Republican infighting that we currently have going on right now. But at the end of the day, he he is likely to become the next speaker. Just the, the process for for getting there is um, a lot a lot tougher road than Republicans were expecting before November 8th. Got it. There's definitely a lot for us to keep our eye on. And Sarah, I hope you come back and give us updates as they come, which seem to be happening, you know, almost every day. Sarah Dorn, thank you so much. Thanks, Brittany.